body, but when the head is missing, there's something else. So that to have them back. In Jesus' name. We will rejoice in the name in thy salvation, and in the name of our God we will set up our plans. The Lord the Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointed. He will hear it from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought together. Save, Save Lord, Lord, let the King be your rest when we come. Amen. 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 You may be seated in Jesus' name. Amen.
for your sustaining and your keeping power. We thank you for your grace and your goodness. Hallelujah. We thank you for your spirit and your anointing. Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Bow on the inside just like the Bible says. No invitation, no duplicate, but the real thing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. And we glorify you for a place to gather to worship. Some know what it feels like to be wandering. Some know what it feels like to be in a graveyard. But you have planted us here on this corner together. Lord God, as we continue to sojourn to heavenly places, and we give you all the glory, we give you all the praise, we give you the honor. We present our bodies to you as a reasonable living sacrifice. And now we look into your holy word, that word that keeps us, that word that sustains us, that word that cleanses us. We pray, Lord, that we would receive everything that you would have for us today in the name, Lord Jesus Christ. And again, we say, Lord, touch every heart, mind, soul, and spirit. We are in the deliverance business because you called us to be. If there are any bound, oh God, we pray that the chains be broken today in the mighty name, Lord Jesus Christ. Loose in the name, Lord Jesus Christ. Whether it's sickness, oh God, disease, whether it's Satan, whether it's a demon, no matter what it is, the blood of Jesus be against it. Lord God, we apply the blood. Lord, if there's something keeping someone from committing their life to you, break that thing right now, Lord, we pray. If there's something hindering salvation, we pray, Lord God, that you break it in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you said the spirit, the anointing, is able to break every chain and every yoke. So let your will be done. Glory to God in this place today. Give someone a mind to be baptized. Give someone a mind to commit or recommit. Give someone a mind, oh God, to grow stronger, to grow better, Lord, in you. And we will continue to glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. He may be seated. We thank God. For this day that he has made, we give glory to him for his grace, his goodness, and his mercy. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank God for you. I'm so happy to be back to look Amen. upon all of your wonderful, beautiful, smiling faces. Amen. Amen. And if there are any guests that are here with us for the first or second time, we're honored that you chose to be with us today. And we're so grateful and we pray and hope that you come again. Amen. And if you've been sitting longer than 10 minutes, you are no longer a guest, but you now become family. So welcome into the family in Jesus' name. Let's give all of our guests or friends a hand. Amen. And I'll give yourselves a hand. Amen. We're going to have some church without me. Somebody had a great time in Bible study. Amen. Thank God for the deacon he tests who carrying him forward. Amen. Heard you had a great time with Minister Lynch here. Amen. And I give God the glory for your faithfulness for the brothers and sisters working together, for the saints working together to continue to keep the church doors open. I was amazed at the number of pastors that had to close their church doors, not because everybody went to the convention, the Holy Convocation, but because they did not necessarily have the people uh, to, that were competent and capable such as you. And so I thank you for your prayers. I thank you for your support. And I thank you for being a true member of the body of Christ in Jesus' name. Give honor to Mother Lewis, who's in the house today. Thank God for you, Mother. Amen. You hear when I left, you hear when I get back. It's such a pleasure, and I always blame on her if I preach longer or harder. It's the Holy Ghost plus Mother Lewis. Amen. Because when you have praying mothers in the house, one of the preachers at the Holy Convocation said that's the problem with the church. We've silenced the praying mothers. Amen. But we thank God for having praying mothers in the house. In Jesus' name, I just want to, don't want to belabor the time, because uh, we know this is, this is Bible time, but I, I don't really make announcements before I preach. But I just want you to know, uh, for Deliverance Church, I'm so honored and proud of you. Uh, and you to know that you have presence, you have presence beyond this block, 
uh, we went to the Holy Convocation, that's when hundreds of churches and Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ come together for their annual meeting. So it's like we meet regionally and then we meet nationally. So people came from Africa, people came from India, people came from all over America. We come and we have service for a week. And I was uh, flabbergasted in the amount of uh, people that came to me with encouraging words based on Lady Graham's social media ministry. And I just want to say um, I was overwhelmed. I had a bishop come up to me and says, I just want you to know I'm a secret stalker. I said, what in the world are you talking about, Bishop? He said, I, I follow everything y'all doing. That's amazing what y'all do. And then another guy heard him say that. This preacher said to me, well, I'm not so secret because I'm, I'm over there all the time like this guy. I give God the praise, you know, because a number of people, you know, are able to observe not us, but what God is doing with us and through us. And I don't know about you, but I'd rather be powerful than big. So I'll take power over size any day. And as long as we continue working the word and acting like acts, we will be a light to someone in this world. And so I want to say congratulations because people recognize the work that you're doing, not just on a screen, but you can't have that if you're not doing something privately. So all those battles that you fight personally that no one knows, all those things that you're dealing with that no one knows but you're relying on this word, this preached word, this taught word, and your brothers and sisters, to God be the glory. Keep on keeping on in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter number six. Amen. I can't lie to you. I sat on the plane last night. I uh, said to my wife, I said, I'm not looking forward to going back to Boston. But I am looking forward to seeing the saints. Amen. Amen. I think you know, as we continue to grow as a community of believers, uh, we create ties. We talk a lot about marriage, about soul ties. I don't know if that's true in marriage as much as it's true in the spirit. But do you realize that our souls are intertwined together in eternity? And so I don't care whether you miss me or not. I just want to know I miss you because it makes a difference. And I, was, I came in and I felt like a weight lifted off when I came in the door seeing the, the wonderful people in Sunday school. And so I give God glory for you. So I'm saying I'm getting soft and sappy at my old age, but it is what it is. I am who I am. Uh, Matthew chapter number 6. We'll just consider verses 25 through 34 as the Spirit gave us a message two weeks ago of then concluded it uh, last night. Uh, what we will share with you today. This is what some call the Sermon on the Mount, one of Jesus' longest recorded messages. He's talking about a lot of things, and then he hits uh, something that's really interesting in verse number 25. It says, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. Don't be anxious or don't worry about what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body. What you will put on is not life more than food and the body more than raiment or clothing. Why don't you consider and look at the birds of the air? These birds, they don't sow, nor do they reap, nor do they gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Goes on to say, are you not of more value than they? So all these Peter people that put animals over humans, that's out of the Bible. You are more valuable than an animal. Verse 27, and which of you, by being anxious or worrying, can add one single cubit or hour to the span of his life? Goes on to say in verse 28, And why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They don't toil nor spin. Yet I tell you that even Solomon, as wise and rich as he was in all of his glory, he was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes, clothes the grass of the field, which the grass is alive, 
and tomorrow is thrown into the oven after you cut it with your lawnmower, will he not much more clothe you? <laughs> oh ye, little faith. Therefore, don't be anxious. Don't say things like, what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles, people that aren't saved, seek after these things. Your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God. But seek first his righteousness. And all these things will be added to you. So in conclusion, therefore, do not be anxious. Don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will be anxious for itself. Because tomorrow has enough trouble sufficient for the day is its own trouble. I want to leave a thought with us today. It is simply from the word, don't be anxious. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I can see your nails. I can see your foot shaking. But don't be anxious. Don't be anxious. I'm just going to hit right off the bat with the biblical truth. Worrying or being anxious, according to the scriptures, is faithlessness. And being anxious can actually be a sin. It's an overlooked sin, and I'll be honest with you, I didn't want to speak this message because I'm guilty. So I have to always confess when I'm guilty before I preach. Because the fact of the matter is sometimes I worry and sometimes I'm anxious. And you know what the final step of anxious is, is anxiety. That's when it's a perpetual state of franticness to the point where you need medications and you need um, drugs to soothe and to calm. We're not talking about that. That's way off the spectrum. But if you're there, this message is for you too. Don't be anxious. You have an option outside of anxiety. Anxiousness or anxiety is an overlooked sin. And if you consider Jesus' message here, he talks about things that are more potent we would consider like uh, loving your enemies, like lust, like divorce, like adultery, like fasting. He's considering how to pray, but tucked in here, he talks about an overlooked sin, which is worry and anxiety. And then he says, listen, I've given every man a measure of faith, and we walk around with our mustard seeds, but he says, if you have an overly concerned anxiety, you have little faith. And what that means is my faith is smaller, actually, than the mustard seed that God has given me. And he says here that we've all been guilty of worrying. And what has worrying ever benefited us? I mean, if we think about it, many of the, the, the doctors will tell you that worrying increases the risk of disease. It increases the risk of cancer. It exacerbates problems that are already within us. And the Bible puts it plain and says, worrying can't add a cubit. A cubit was around 18 inches. Won't you stand up, Brother Marvin? Amen. Come on up here. How tall are you? How tall are you? You don't know how tall you are. We're going to say you're five, about 5'8", five, 3 quarters. We're going to say you're 5'6". Is there any way, shape, and form this brother can add any height to himself? Can he do it? Who can do it? Now, he can grow his hair out and get a flat top. Like a kid played back in the day, he could grow it high, but that does that change his actual height? It doesn't change his actual height. So the Bible is telling us that no matter where we are in life, if we want a situation changed, if we want to grow, worrying is not actually going to make us grow. In fact, and thank you, sir, it has an adverse effect. Now, I'm not an ornithologist, and that's the person that looks at birds and studies them, but the scripture compares this to birds. And if you think about a bird, what do birds eat? They primarily eat seeds, is that right? They, some may eat fruit, and some, now I'm not talking about pigeons, you know, pigeons eat what we throw out, you know, I'm not talking about those kind of birds, but birds in the wild 
eat fruit, some of them, and they eat seeds and what else? Worms and things like that. Now, where do fruit and seeds and worms come from? They are provided by God. They don't have to do anything but open their eyes and see what God has provided. You see, when we are anxious or worried, that means to be overly concerned or divided. Now, the Bible, I love the Bible because the word tells us that we can be concerned. Now, we're not giving license to people to not go to work tomorrow because Jesus is going to show up on your doorstep with food. We're not giving license for you to walk up in Macy's and just snatch things off the rack and walk out saying Jesus said he's providing this for me despite the alarm tag on it. We're not saying that because we have to be consistent with scripture. And Paul says it's a, if a man doesn't work, that man doesn't eat. So what the scripture is telling us is we do what we're created to do and God will do what he is supposed to do because he is God. But when we're overly concerned, that's when we obsess to the point where it does something to the faculties of our mind. And when we are overly concerned, it's taking the faith from God and his word and resting it in ourselves or our emotions or our own mentalities. So there's nothing wrong with being concerned about which grocery store to go to that has the best deal. There's nothing wrong with being concerned about what outfit you're going to wear on the first day of school. But when I'm overly concerned, when I'm in church thinking about those things, when I'm in my prayer closet thinking about those things, and I'm not able to live my life because these things are controlling me, then there's a problem there because it's saying that I don't have faith in God. You see, worrying also deals with being divided. Anyone ever had their attention divided? One of the reasons why I don't look at people and I try to not look at people when I preach is because I can see in the eyes of people where their actual mind is. That's a gift that God gives real speakers and preachers. They can see certain things and so when I close my eyes, now I can't see it but I can feel things in the spirit. And when we took the text, some of us were with it. But as soon as we opened up, some began to check out and to think about other things because the mind is divided. And sometimes the things that we think about aren't entertainment, it's legitimate things. If I don't have enough money to pay my bills despite going to work, that's enough to cause some anxiety. If I'm waiting to pass an exam so that I can get a promotion, that's enough to cause me to be anxious. If my kids are acting crazy and I don't know what to do to help them and I've tried to do everything everyone told me to do, then that's something that's legitimate that can distract me from giving God the praise. But I'm going to give you something before we close that will help you overcome that issue in our lives. Because if you've been in church any amount of time, you can tell the truth up in here. You sang the song. I know. Let me talk about myself. I've gone through the whole first half of service before and didn't even think about God. Because we sang the same song. We read the same. I was on autopilot. But that's not the liturgy's fault. That's my fault. Because didn't the writer say come into his presence with thanksgiving into his courts with praise my praise is perpetual based on who God is and what he's done I don't care if we sing dry songs with no music from the 1970 Methodist church if it's biblical I can still give God a praise because it's not dependent upon the music it's dependent upon what God's done in my soul and if he's saying me from sin that's enough to give him the praise no matter what let the church say amen and so Jesus tells us listen when it comes to the basic necessities of life when it comes to things like food and drink and clothing listen Jesus says I got you and if we tell the truth and shame the devil, some of us say, listen, preacher, I'm good. Listen, I'm not worried about food. In fact, I'm worried about the fact that I eat too much food. <laughs> I'm worried about the fact that I have too many clothes. I'm worried about the fact that I drink too many sugar drinks. And, and, and have you taken a moment to consider if, 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 if you have food in your refrigerator, if you have food in your cupboard, 
If you have clothes on your back right now, have you honestly paused in the last week or month to say from your heart, thank you, Jesus? Think about that. Jesus is saying here that the basic necessities would be provided. The things that we can often take for granted. Think about that. Have we paused and just simply said, thank you, Jesus, for food. Thank you, Jesus, for running water. Thank you, Jesus, for clothes and options. Most of us, when we open our cabinet, we actually have options of what to eat. Some people don't have options despite having food. When we go to our closet, we have options. And some of us have options at different sizes. But we still have options nonetheless. That's a, I'm going to pause for a second. Let, let, let you close your eyes and let, just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I thank you. I thank you. Because according to scripture, that's the basic necessities that Jesus said he would provide. And so we may say, I'm good because, listen, my fridge is flowing. I got all the drinks I want. I got my Gatorade. I got my, my Fiji water. Praise the name of our God. I got my tea. So this preacher, I ain't, I ain't anxious about these things. And you say, I, my cabinets are flowing. I got my snacks. I got my Doritos and my, my pork rinds, come on, what y'all eat in Jamaica? I got my mangoes, what y'all eat in Haiti, and I don't know what y'all eat. You, you got all your stuff, give me something. All I know is South by saying, that ain't, that, ain't, that ain't right. right. Plantains, all right, I eat those too. But it's a soup, soup, bouju, bouju. Jumu, all right, that's what I'm going with, jumu. I, I, I got my, my, my things to make that. And then when I scroll over to my closet, my closet is complete, I got, I got tags still on my clothes. I got some shoes that I forgot that I even bought. Praise the name of God. I got that TJ Maxx and Marshall's red clearance sticker still on there. I know some of us are at Macy's and, and, and Nordstrom's, but you know, it's, still, it's still there. And so Pastor, this, this message may not apply to me, but, but the truth is that there are some other things that sometimes I am anxious about. I, I need a situation change. I, I need a diagnosis deleted. I, I need to have my heart healed and my, my mind maintained. I, I need to have my attitude adjusted. I need, I need my feelings fixed. And, and tell the truth, some of us, uh, we, 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 we looking for a spouse. And, and sometimes we worry. I'm getting up in age. And, and I'm getting to that point where it ain't nobody going to nub me for me. And so I'm concerned about where my job is going to come from. Because what I'm making now isn't enough to support the family that I have. And I, I have some goals. And I, I've done what they suggest I should do. But it seems like the end isn't meeting. And it's not working out. And if we run the gamut, there is something that we all have that we're going to worry about when we leave this church. There's something that Monday morning will, will smack us around a little bit. And if it hasn't happened to you, you just haven't lived long enough. That means mom is still taking good care of you and daddy's still taking good care of you. But if you live, the Bible said man is born of a woman and that person is a few days and full of trouble. Everybody in their life has trouble, including when you come out of the womb. As soon as you come out of the womb, you have trouble. You know what that trouble is? The fact that you were in a nice, dark, warm place, and now you're in a place with all these bright lights, and it's cold, and I hear these sounds, and, and that's trouble because I can't return back to where I came from. But if you consider for a moment when the doctor puts the baby next to the mother, typically the baby begins to calm down because although the child is not inside of the womb anymore, it's been carried by a woman for nine months. And so he not only knows what's on the inside, that child can identify with the parent on the outside. And so the reason why the doctor lays the child on the mother, that's the doctor and biology's way 
of saying, listen, child, I know you're in a scary environment, places you're not used to. You're out of your comfort zone, but there's someone here to calm your nerves a little bit so that you don't have to be anxious. And, and for us in the spirit, that's not a biological mother, but in the spirit, that's our heavenly father. Hallelujah. Can someone say thank you, Jesus, for daddy? I may not know my real father. I, I may not have a relationship with my real father. And if I do, it may be fragmented. I'm here to tell you that nobody can take the place of a biological father. But Jesus did the best he could by dying on the cross. Hallelujah. And giving us a heavenly father to have access to. So that when we feel anxiety and worry about our situation, he will soothe us and he will calm us. Now you see there's anxieties about things we know, but there are sometimes things that God protects us from based on things that we don't know. I don't know about you, but the Lord has opened my eyes from time to time to say, listen, you, you praise me for all the things you can see, but sometimes in your prayer closet, ask God to open your eyes for the things that he's done that you were not able to see. The situations that he worked out that we didn't even know he was working out. And that's a, a mentality or, or a token, if you will, to remember Remember, hallelujah, that Jesus has us on his mind and he cares about us despite the disease, despite the hurt, despite the pain. You see, because I get worried sometimes because I'm not sure if God's going to do what he said he's going to do. Because when I look at my watch, it seems that he's late and he's not coming when I think he's going to come. He's not coming how I expect him to come, but either he's God or he's not. Either he's our heavenly father or he's not and so we're challenged not with asking what time he's going to come but what am I going to do between the time that he's not coming and the time that he's going to come how do I fill up that time what do I replace worry with what do I replace anxiety with stick with me about 17 uh, uh, we'll make it 13 more minutes and we'll let you know that I was riding in the rental car see the Holy Ghost gave me this message because I thought I was cute. I said I'm going to get, I got a good deal on Expedia for a rental car and I said I'm going to get this nice sports car and praise God me and Lil D were happy. Now what happened was when we got there, uh, I didn't calculate we had too many bags for the car and it, the trunk wasn't big enough. But you know bro, I, I can't go back on my ego. We're going to get this sports car somehow and we're going to floss up in this convention and so praise God I, I played Tetris in the, in the trunk and we got most of the bags in but one suitcase had to go in the back and so the kids are squenched up like this for two and a half hours but we were looking good now common sense would have suggested that I go back and say listen I need something a little bit bigger but you know sometimes when you want to look good for people hallelujah it's not rational and so we got there but see God is good and you know what happened on the second day I come out get ready to get in the car and the tire is almost flat and I said this cheap thing so I ride around hallelujah put some air some in it and you know what the light wouldn't go off but I didn't care because we looking good and I said we don't need to put no bags in here but in the back of my mind I said listen now we got to drive from Alabama all the way to Savannah so that's going to be about five hours and I know that ain't going to be right for the kids but I, I, I'm going to figure it out and so I, I thought about shipping bags back and I thought about all these other things that would cost money and so the second day I go out again and the, the tire light is still on I said, I, I know I filled the tire up to where it's supposed to be. So I said, let me go to a shop. I went to a, uh, I went to a gas station here, didn't have air. And went to another gas station, the air thing wasn't working. And I still wasn't kind of getting the picture. You see, God knows the things that we don't know and the things that we don't want to see. Praise God. And I finally went over to another shop and the fella put the air in there and he did his little diagnosis. He says, you're good. I said, but the dashboard say I'm not good. Put some more in there. 
that I can't sort of blow up the tire. I said, I can't, all right, let me get out of here. So I'm riding around now, scared now, because now my safety of my family is predicated upon whether this tire has air in it appropriately or not. And now common sense tells me I can't ride six hours like this. And so we get on the phone and we say we have to exchange it. And so we exchange it and know what they gave us. They gave us an SUV that was free of charge. But the issue was when, when God tries to bless you, the enemy always tries to pervert that blessing. Listen, some of us think sometimes that if we're battling the enemies of our flesh and the enemies of the world, that we think something's wrong. It might just mean something's right. Yeah. Now, it might just mean you are really blessed. It, right. it might just mean you really have favor. The devil showed up to Jesus after he fasted and prayed. He showed up on him. Hallelujah. So he don't think it's a strange thing when you when you go through things. Being blessed doesn't mean you don't go through things. Being blessed and saved doesn't mean you don't have challenges. Being filled with the Holy Ghost doesn't mean you still don't have problems. It just means you have something on the inside that's like a V8 engine like my sports car that will get me to a destination and I won't need triple A to help me. But you know they gave me this SUV and I'm riding thank the Lord. Now common sense kicks in and now I want to be all spiritual. Like, Lady Grant, you don't want to. This is a blessing because we can fit all of our bags in it. Now I knew that a week ago but I just had to play it off a little bit. And we're sitting there and, and you know Layla's analytical. She sees everything. She says, Daddy, I see an ant. Oh, shucks, Lady. We're in the south. You're supposed to see an ant. Uh, no, Daddy, I see a whole bunch of ants. And now they're crawling all over me. Uh, and next thing we know, there's ants crawling all through the car. But I wanted to keep that one. See, I wanted to keep that sports car. And now I got this big SUV. I can still floss, Brother Julian, because it looks good sitting on some rims. But now I got ants in it. And I said, we're keeping this one. My brother stopped by Home Depot, huh? bought some $1.99 raid, and said, everybody out and started spraying that thing down and I thought we were good to go because they were all dead mm -hmm. and I turned the air conditioner on and ants start calling out the air conditioner I said ain't this something I Lord done blessed us get back to the airport all the cars are gone all they have left is two cars. We opened that one up and Layla found the ants again. Oh, we can't get that one. And over in the corner was this kind of semi-beat up, non-flossable vehicle. <laughs> Hallelujah. Had some dents in it. Hallelujah. Had some scratches on it. Wasn't what I would consider, you know, what we want to ride around in. But it's all we had. But you know what I found out driving that car for the week? Huh? The seats were plush. I said to him, I feel like I'm sitting in a recliner. You know what I found out? We had more than enough room to put all of our bags in. The air condition worked. The ride was kind of smooth. And if I'm honest with myself, the interior of that vehicle was better than the BMW. Oops, I just told y'all what we had. The interior was better than the Forerunner. And it was a lot more relaxed. Liable. And what the Lord showed me in that was, listen, don't worry about what's going on on the outside. This mortal body is going to perish. Don't worry about what you see in the mirror all the time. Don't worry about what people said you could and couldn't do. You have something on the inside. And it's called the Holy Ghost that gives enough room for you to do everything that I told you to do. You got enough room on the inside to carry that hurt. You got enough room on the inside to deal with that pain. You got enough on the inside to do what that teacher said you couldn't do. You got enough on the inside to defy what that IEP said. You got enough on the inside to go beyond what that liar, that hater, that bad or shut about you. You have enough on the inside to get to where God would have you to be. It may
may not look like much, but you got a whole lot going on. You got some scratches. You got some bumps. Those are the trophies of life. But how many know, as long as I have King Jesus, I don't need anybody else. Listen, some of us may not get to heaven in a BMW. Some of us may not get to heaven in an SUV. I don't care if I have a pinto, a hoopty, or a lemon. As long as I'm moving forward and advancing, Paul said it like this, forgetting those things that are behind. Forget about that flat tire that would have left you beside the road when you wanted to hold on to looking good. Anybody glad to be delivered from what people think about you? Hallelujah. You're riding around. Know you look like a skank, but you like people whistling at you. But now you're clothed in modesty. You're clothed in holiness. And only people whistling are people in heaven saying, go ahead. That cloud of witnesses they're saying holiness is still right. It's still beautiful. Sanctification is still pretty. Let the church say amen. Don't cry about them demons that got in your blessing. The ants that were coming out. This is all Holy Ghost now. Don't cry about those things that came to spoil you. That represents traumas and things that have happened that you have no control over. I had control over whether I held on to their first car or not. But the second car, I inherited problems from someone else. But how many know we serve a God that is able? He's able. Ain't no demon in hell that is supposed to make a child of God worry and be anxious. Don't you know that you got more power? Somebody said, want to put a thousand, but two ten thousand to fly. Let the church shout, yeah. yeah! And so there, I got that new vehicle, and the Lord reminded me, he said, this here represents full deliverance church saints. Listen, some of y'all are like David. You were in places where you weren't supposed to be. Yeah. You were feeling things uh, that you weren't supposed to feel. Uh, and that God brought you to a place. Uh, when David left Saul's house, uh, he was running, uh, trying to get away from people that were harming him naturally and spiritually. Uh, and there were other men that were called his mighty men uh, that gravitated toward them. Uh, some of them were criminals. Uh, some of them were sinners. Uh, some of them had done some horrible things. Uh, but when you get next to a real man of God, don't you know the blood works? Don't you know that you have something called the overflow blessing? That's why the writer said, fill my cup and let it overflow. The cup is for me. The overflow is for you. And so the anointing that was on David was sufficient to cover those mighty men so that they too were protected despite their past, despite their mistakes. States. And he said the church has a bunch of people like that. A motley crew. My license plate was bent up. The guy gave me the paper. He said check the scratches. I circled the whole car because everything is scratched. But on the inside it was clean and pristine. No demons. No devils. And more than what we needed. The kids had AC in the back. They had heated seats in the back. They could stretch out and lay out and not argue and fight. What are you saying, preacher? When God blesses you to be in a place, it may not look like much. It may not be worth well much. But if God puts you here, everything you need is on the inside. It's a perk that is said. Everything you need is in the house. No matter what it looks like on the outside. And if God be inside of me, it's more than the world. It's more than a flat tire. It's more than red ants. Because I, I got the victory. And so why is my heart cast down? Why is my spirit disquieted? Why do 
our worry on Monday and have the anxiety on Tuesday. I'm here to tell you that your heavenly father knows you don't have, you don't have, you don't have to worry. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We serve a God who not only, hallelujah, we serve a God not only that knows what we're dealing with and knows what we're dealing with and what we need help with, but we serve a God that provides when we don't know what we need help with. Let me skip on here to what the biblical truth is. I think football season started. I'm, this is the quarrel talking now. I don't know why. I feel how I feel huh? between the concussions and Kaepernick. Huh? But if I can steal from Bill Belichick huh? in honor of preseason, huh? look at your neighbor huh? and say, do your job. That's the biblical truth. That's the application. You say, preacher, what's my job? Well, first of all, when I look at verse 34, it tells me that tomorrow has a whole lot of problems. And so don't even think about tomorrow's problems. Some of the Holy Ghost said, some of us pull up our phones and we look at our schedules and we look at all the problems we have tomorrow. The Spirit is saying, hold up. Don't do that. Don't worry about tomorrow. Just deal with today. Don't look until next week and then have anxiety about that next doctor's appointment. You might be healed before that next appointment. You might be delivered before that next service. Don't assume that just because the problem's on your calendar, that is still on God. You might have told that angel, sink your calendar with there's a delete that appointment. You don't have an appointment with failure. You don't have an appointment with disability. You don't have an appointment with discouragement. Cancel that thing. Hallelujah. And so you say to me, then what's my job? Hallelujah. This is the good part. Say to somebody, don't worry. Just worship. Oh, Lord. And if we're honest with ourselves, sometimes that's the hardest thing to do. Because when I'm weak and I'm heavy laden, you want me to lift my hands. Oh, yeah. When my feet feel like they have lead in them, you want me to stomp my feet. Oh, yeah. When the pain has gotten so heavy that all I've been able to do is moan and not you want me to open my mouth and shout hallelujah oh yeah because if the enemy has his way he'll have us focusing on the problem and not the problem solver he'll have you focusing on the situation and not the solution ah Anybody ever been in a situation that only Jesus could deliver you from? I mean a real situation. I mean not something that was a coincidence that you just had to pull your hand out the oven and it would stop burning. Not that kind of thing. You know you had your hand on the stove. Take it off. That ain't not a miracle. But I mean something that only Jesus could do. Come on, put that thing in your mouth. And you hold that there as a monument, as a memorial, as a reminder that if he did it before, that he can do it again. Same God back then is the same God now. And somebody said, preacher, I don't have it. That is in the word. Find your situation in the word or in a testimony and say, Lord, if you did for them, I reflect your word back to you. You can do it for me and then put a praise on it. Now, I know, 
I know, I know. That's a cute thing to say. We went all around there, and everybody got a praise. The homosexual had a praise. The liar had a praise. The cheating preacher had a praise. I ain't talking about that foolishness. But if you live it right, and you're striving to be holy, your praise makes a difference. If you ain't got that, your praise ain't nothing but a dance. And it sounds stupid before God. But if you striving for holiness, when you put a praise on it, it becomes an instrument of war. Hallelujah. What happened when them three Hebrew boys got in that fire? They didn't focus on the fire. They focused on that fourth one in there that looked like the Son of God. What happened? Hallelujah. When Miriam and the fellas got across that sheet, Miriam pulled out her tambourine and she started playing. sing a song. They couldn't clap like they wanted to. They couldn't shout like they wanted to. But they sang a little song. I don't know what they said. Maybe it was love lifted me. Maybe it was amazing grace. Maybe it was something else. I don't know what they say. But whatever they say, because their life matched the song, the Bible says suddenly, suddenly, the change the doors open and they were free. So saints, I'm telling you, you and I got Jesus on the inside. We don't have to worry. We don't have to be anxious because we, we have more than what we need on the inside. See, worship is not just what I do, it's who I am. See, worship is a lifestyle. Hallelujah. Everybody can sing in here on Sunday morning. But I told you some time ago, in that message, name that tune. Hold on to your tune, baby. You need a depression tune. You need something that when you feel down, you can say, victory is mine. It don't look like it's mine. But I'm telling depression to get behind. Because victory today is mine. Somebody that feels like they're going to backslide. You can sing, I am free. No more chains holding me. Listen, you need a song. Somebody said when they wake up, they say, get your mind on Jesus. And let's have church. How are you going to have church by yourself? Well, the Bible said we're two or three. It's you and the Holy Ghost. When you have the Holy Ghost, you can have church all by yourself. Didn't he say he's a comforter? Didn't he say he will be with you? Didn't he say he's a well of water? And so when the worry comes, what do I do? Between the moment of the prayer and the answer of the prayer, I'm just going to worship. Didn't we say that in the beginning of the year? When the fellow told him his son was going to be sacrificed, when God went to Abraham, and said you kill your only son what did Abraham do he went away and he worshipped he didn't worry about his son he didn't worry about the situation he spoke in faith he said son we're going to go over here we're going to go over here but he looked back he said we're going to be back but we're going to worship and we will come again unto you. Well, if he was supposed to sacrifice him, who was the we? He knew how to host that the Father seeks for true worshipers. And if you want to maybe change God's mind, if you want to maybe get God's attention, learn how to worship him. Because when he worshiped, he came on back and the Lord provided worship saints. Worship saints. Worship. You say, preacher, what's worship? Well, listen. Worship first and foremost.
foremost is a condition of the heart. Listen, it's when my heart is prostrate before God. In the Old Testament, worship looked like this. You got flat and you put your face down in the dirt and you just stayed there as a symbol of total submission. Now we say worship is singing praise songs, is doing my dance. Yeah, there's a component to that. But if my heart is not right, if I can't put my face in God's brown dirt, then some pride is there somewhere. If I can't fall on my knees, and didn't the fellow say, and say, God, I'm trifling, but help me anyhow. Hallelujah. And now when I dance, like Paul and Silas, you may hear me stomping, but God is tapping his feet in heaven on my behalf, shaking the foundation of my situation. So saints of God, when worry jumps on you, when anxiety jumps on you, find a place to worship, to worship, to worship, to worship. Shoot the face of God. Tell him how you feel. God, I'm mad. God, I'm frustrated. God, I'm angry. But I worship you anyhow. I praise you anyhow. I magnify you anyhow. I glorify you anyhow. God, I don't understand it. But you're still good. I don't want to agree with it. But you're still perfect. I don't see it. But you're still sovereign. Tell him how you feel. Don't be a denier. But don't deny him either. Tell him how you feel. Tell him what you feel. But don't deny him. Tell him he's able. Tell him he can do it. Tell him he's not a liar. Tell him he's a miracle worker. Tell him he's a way maker. Tell him he's a provider. Tell him hallelujah. And remind him that you know what he is. He can't hide from you. He can't sneak one past you. Because you know the testament. You know the will that was given to you. Did his promises or yay and all men? Let the church shout yeah! When I worship, that's seeking God. When I worship, the Bible says these things. I used to think that meant all the glittery things. No, the Holy Ghost told me no. That's your bare necessities. We're talking about food, water, and clothes. I'm going to give you these things. But you seek me anyhow. And then the scripture reminded me. But he said, no good thing will I withhold from them that walk upright. Just walk upright, baby. Focus on doing right. Righteous. Focus on the Bible. Don't worry about the things you can't see. Just do the job that God has called us to have. And these things, look at your neighbor and say these things. Come on, some of y'all need to loosen up. Push them a little bit and say these things. These things will be at. Now human nature says, I'm going to close it out. Human nature says, listen, if I got a problem over here, you want me to focus over there. It doesn't make sense. I got pain every time I move. How you want me to worship? I feel it. I don't know. But that's why we have the Holy Ghost to obey the word. I can't answer that question deep. I don't know the answer, brother. But what I do know is it's more blessed to be obedient so I may have to sacrifice my comfort in seeking Jesus Christ but when I get these things I'll know that it's worth it Paul said what shall we say to these things if God be for us who can be against us so saints be reminded tomorrow morning when your feet hit that cold floor be reminded that you don't have to worry when you get to that job and that boss with the same breath come barking in your face be reminded that you don't have to worry when you get your paycheck on Friday and it doesn't look like you want it to look be reminded that you don't have to
the word. I'll meet you Tuesday on the prayer line for worship. I'll meet you Friday at 7 o'clock for worship. I'll meet you Sunday at 9.30 for worship. And we can get it in. We can get it in. We can get it in. Oh, come and worship the Lord together and magnify him. It's like there was no things. Those transformers, when they combine, they form something bigger. My praise and worship by myself ain't sufficient. But when I get with my partners, when I get with my spiritual role, God, when I get with my cousin, hallelujah, now I got a little more with me. I got a little more conviction because I'm not running by myself. I got some people. Come on, if you're with me. Got some people behind me. You see me, but there's more of me. Come on, get in line. Because when I go to fight, I'm not fighting by myself. I got some people that are with me. Don't you know? Do not by yourself. Not only are we with you, but God is with you. 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 God is with Challenge each other. When I speak and it sounds like worry, challenge me. Don't worry. Worship. When you get on that text message or that snap and it sounds like anxiousness, remind them. Don't worry. Worship. We have to hold each other accountable to this word, myself included. Because when we look out and see all oh, the negativity, Trust me, it's enough to worry. But we don't have treasure in earthen vessels. We have the excellence of Jesus Christ. And we are the light. To say, yeah, I got these problems, just like my coworkers, just like my schoolmates. But let me show you what I do. Instead of going to the bar, I go to worship. Instead of rolling a blunt, I go to worship. Instead of harming myself, I go to worship. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Instead of going to the gym, I go to worship. Instead of eating myself sick, I go to worship. I go to worship. Hallelujah. I go to worship. And my situation can always change, but somehow I feel better. Somehow on the inside, my outside still looks wrecked up, but my inside is clean, and I can get from Birmingham to Savannah with no problem. Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. I am chief Hallelujah. among those that are anxious. Hallelujah. And I pray Hallelujah. first for your forgiveness. And I also pray for the saints that are here today and may share in this testimony. And sometimes, many times, we are not full of faith. We are that faithless generation. Sometimes, Lord, we don't consider the flowers. We don't consider how that rose grew from the concrete. It's not because of a ghetto philosopher said it, but because you allow it. And so, God, expand. 